Thank you, Krishna. Thank you all. Um, thank you especially to Intake One Saiful. Um, I'm sure you all agree with me. Uh, you know, One Saiful for Prime Minister. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Today, now, you know, re-elected. Um, I, I, I'll be very frank with you. Um, I, I, I have some rather disrespectful friends, and I told them the topic of uh, our little discussion today, and I said, Islam, a blessing to Malaysia. They all sniggered, uh, they all laughed, even the Muslim friends, um, and they said, well, are you sure it's a blessing? You know, it's more like a curse. You know, and my take from that is, this is how damaging um, bringing politics and religion together is because you no longer have that respect for religions which these people have had before. Once you bring the, the, the noble religions that we all have, like um, in, from Hinduism we uh, have this tradition of respecting all religions as merely different um, uh, streams in one mountain. Uh, nice analogy. But once you, you do that, once you bring religion into public policy and discourse, you um, transform the person and the religion. They become one. So you no longer distinguish between the people who abuse the religion and the religion itself. And so that is why I, uh, while I agree with very much almost everything that one Saiful says, I think the point of departure that I have is by his appeal to speak the language of religion in order to achieve fair policies. I suggest that what we should instead do is speak the language of common sense, <laughs> speak the language of justice, of shared values, but leave religion out of the discourse on policy, out of the discourse on how we should govern ourselves. And I don't, I don't want to, um, I, I think I agree very much with Herman as well, Dr. Herman, when he used that, that term of secularism. And that, to me, is what secularism is. It means we will not interfere with how you live your religious life. But in our system of governance, in how we uh, uh, elect our leaders, how our leaders implement policy, they will keep their personal religious beliefs out of it. Because one Saiful gives a brilliant, wonderful, compassionate view of his religion. But you and I, all, we all know that there are other interpretations. And sometimes those interpretations cause injustice. Um, I, I was fortunate last year to, to travel around uh, America um, some, some call it, uh, you, you know what they all call it, but anyway, the bastion of secularism, right? And I had the, 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 the good fortune of, of visiting Atlanta in Georgia, the deep south, where I visited a mosque, and the entire congregation of that mosque were African Americans, and they were genuinely reverts to Islam because their ancestors were Muslim in Africa and they had come to to America as slaves, and now this congregation was going back to their roots. And the Imam of that, that mosque said, America is the best place for him to be a Muslim. Because he had a big, huge mosque. There was no problem, zoning problems, nothing like that. You know, any, anybody could come and convert into Islam, and there was no problem. People wanted to leave, you know, what can they do? But the only people there were genuine, devout Muslims. And they had a wonderful time about I mean, they treated us wonderfully, gave us great hospitality. So that, that ringing endorsement of the U.S. system of separation of church and state stayed with me. This is the best country to practice Islam. You know, um, I also want to draw, I mean, once I do a lot of analogies between the situation of minorities here and minorities in England, and perhaps another, uh, from, I, I spent some time in England many years ago as well, and I saw some of the, um, the reactions of the majority to, to those from, 
from minority cultures. But never once was there was this blame, as far as I can remember, on Christianity. Never once was Christianity blamed for, for, for the excesses of the politicians of the British National Party, a racist uh, far-right party in, 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 in Britain. It was always the fact that they were the majority, it was white supremacy rather than Christianity. And I suggest that this is because nobody in England uses Christian dogma in their politics. Whereas by continuing to, and I'm, I know I'm coming back to my original point, by continuing with this discourse, by continuing to drag Islam into politics, you, uh, those of you who are Muslim here, you are allowing your religion to become the subject of fear and sometimes hatred. And so I appeal to you to, to, um, to stop doing that. You know, use your religion to teach you what you should do and to inform your views as to policy. But in discussing policy, in debating policy, let's talk common values, let's talk justice, humanity, and common sense. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shan. Um, I think he made his point very clear. He believes in the separation of state and religion. So let's move on to our final panelist, um, Ustad. The floor is yours. Thank you, Christian. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And a very good evening to all of you. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I praise Allah for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this wonderful program. And of uh, course, I praise Allah as well for uh, honoring ourselves to be a part of a program like this because I do believe that the most destructive attitude that we have is just being uh, self-centered and not interested, lack of interest in this kind of discussion. So it is an honor for all of us to, to be here. This is the first thing that I would like to uh, respond to uh, the opportunity that you've given to me. Go ahead. Uh, well, I would like to uh, begin uh, my discussion by, uh, if you look at the presentation that been given by Mr. Wan Saipo, there are many things to be said, but I would like to just uh, focus on a small part of it, uh, which is related to what I've been doing now, so that my presentation will be balanced between what I believe and what I do. So I will be concerned to concentrate much on the question that we raised by Mr. Wan Saipo just now, which is why Muslim lost confidence about their religion, which caused all these problems that we have. First of all, I would like to uh, um, address about the issue of diversity. Uh, in the Quran, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujrat, in verse uh, uh, 49, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 49, verse 13, Ya ayya ayuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakrin wa unta wa ja'anakum shu'uba wa khubadila li ta'arub. O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female and we created you into nations and tribes in order for you to get to know each other. So diversity is the human nature. So either you look into diversity as the source of problem or you try to live with the diversity and make the most of it. It's more or less about the way we perceive the idea. And the question is, Islam, is it a blessing? To nations, it is something related to the mindset, the way we view. As well said by people, what you see is what you get. As simple as that. So, as for myself, as we mentioned by Trisha, I just want to give a colorful background. I uh, did my first degree in Sharia, in a very traditional way, in Mota University in Jordan. After my graduation, I had to believe that, to a certain extent, I understood my religion. But, there was a big question in my mind. I understand the text of my religion, but do I understand the human nature, which the text will be implemented? And to answer that question, I forced myself not to go back directly to Malaysia after finishing my study, and I migrated to England, and at that, that place where I met uh, Mr. Wan Saipu, and later on, I have been appointed as the Minister of Religion in one of the most... Um, I don't know how to describe the best place for me to exercise my understanding, which is Belfast, where there was a huge problem between, you know, uh, about the diversity. 